Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting snowflakes <laughs> and I'm sipping on some black cherry tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, phthalo green, ultramarine blue, Mars black, and burnt umber, which I like to call brown. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's all I'll be using today. For my tools, I have two brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a one inch wide flat bristle brush, and I have a number three round synthetic brush. And I'll refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you could download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting a base coat for the entire canvas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are blue, green, and black. And what I'm going to do is I make, I'm going to make myself a custom dark greenish blue color and I'm going to be using that as the base coat for my whole canvas, for my whole scene. I'm going to um, use my large brush to paint, but I'm going to show you how to mix the custom color with my small brush. I have magically pre-mixed my color and I'm going to show you how I got there. So this is the color that I'm going for in through here. So this is what it looks like if you were to thin it out. How I got to that was a lot of my ultramarine blue, a little bit of my green, and a tiny touch of black. And this just turns it into a really nice dark bluish green type of a color. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be using my large brush to paint the entire canvas with this color. So I know that because my canvas is white, and I am using such a dark base on my canvas for this, for this particular layer that I will notice streakiness or brush stroke marks from my brush, especially since I am using a firm bristle brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put one layer on and then I'm gonna let it dry and I'm gonna put a second layer on so I have a nice solid coat of paint to progress with. You could certainly, if yours covers better than mine, you can certainly get away with one coat, but I know that I'm gonna want a pretty solid color going into the next um, step where we're gonna be put, putting some out of focus type of um, effect on this background. So I'm gonna want this to be a pretty solid color. So I'm just putting a, a thin coat right now as my first coat and then I will come back, I'll let it dry and do a second coat. You can also take this color and wrap it around the edges or the side of your canvas. That way you'll have a, f the, your project, your full project will look nice and complete. I like to, if, I, if I'm not planning on framing my painting with a wood frame or a decorative type of um, frame, I will 
most likely always paint the edges of the canvas. That way you can hang it on the wall and not worry about putting a frame on it. And then before I let this dry for my second coat, I'm going to just go back and forth like this with my brush so I can level out my paint. And then I'm gonna let it dry. I'm gonna put a second coat of the same color on top of this. And then we will be using this large brush for the next step so you can wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be finishing the background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are white, blue, green, and my custom um, dark bluish green that we have already pre-mixed. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be making several what I'm gonna call out of focus soft colors in this background that are going to resemble the out of focus maybe snow flakes falling because the painting itself is a, a real kind of like a hyper close up on one snowflake so everything in the background realistically would be kind of out of focus because we're so close on this one snowflake that everything else would be out of focus. So we're just going to put some out of focus soft colors in the background to give that illusion that perhaps this is a photograph. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using my large brush and I'm going to be using very little bit of paint. I'm going to be applying these colors in a circular type of motion and they're going to be really soft not much lighter than my background, but a little bit lighter, and they're gonna be um, kind of faded into this dark darkness. If you ever run into trouble, like you went too light or lighter than you expected, wait for it to dry for one, because it will dry darker than it is when it's wet because you have a dark background. So it will look lighter and brighter when it's wet and dry darker because of the dark background. So give it a chance to dry first and then if it's too light for you, you can always come back with some of this background color. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to start with a little bit of ultramarine blue on my brush. So just a little tiny bit. I know that my my blue, my ultramar or my ultramarine blue and my phthalo green do not have good opacity to them, which means they're gonna be transparent and see-through, which means they're gonna see a lot of this background. So when they dry, they will be darker, but when I put them on to start, it's gonna look a little bit brighter. I'm gonna start it like this in order to give myself the idea of where I want that. I can add a little, I just picked up a little bit more blue because I want this to be a little bit more vibrant. And then what I can do is I can pick up some of my background color which I just did on my brush to get it to fade into the surrounding area. Now, I know that that ultramarine blue is gonna turn pretty dark as it dries, so I can even right now, if I want, pick up a teeny tiny bit of white, and when I mean teeny tiny bit, I just have little speckles on the end of my brush, and I can intermingle that with my blue, and you can see how it lightened it right up, but it didn't get it too, too light. I did that while the blue was still a little wet, and it provides me with this way of adding this nice softness to it. So I'm gonna continue that process. I'm gonna be using, um, like right now, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my fallow green on my dirty brush, just an itty bitty bit of it. Maybe I do one of those um, marks up in through here. So that's my phthalo green. I'm going to put a little bit more on my brush just to get it to be a little bit more vibrant. Maybe since I have a lot on my brush right now, more than I expected, I'll put a, another one in through here. But again, I know it's going to get darker as it dries. I'm going to pick up some of my background color now to get it to blend into the area next to it. Maybe we'll do that on this one as well. And I know that because of these colors, and I, I'm familiar with what's gonna happen as they dry, I don't get nervous as um, if I'm putting too much on because I know it's gonna dry so dark. Now I'm gonna put that tiny bit of white paint on my brush, go back into this center area, and you can see just putting a little itty bit of that white in that mixture allows for it to get uh, visible. I don't need it to do anything more than just be a little visible. Now I'm going back into my ultramarine blue and I'm just going to kind of keep repeating this process until I have as many of these soft 
out of focus marks that I want. So I've got my ultramarine blue. I think I'm going to do a couple of the blue ones as I've got the color on my brush right now. Maybe I'll do one over here. You can do some over on the sides of the painting so this way it looks like they're, you know, encompassing the whole viewing range and beyond so you can really have fun with that. I don't feel like I need to pick up any of my background color to get this to blend so I'm just going to pick up a tiny bit of my white at this point get these marks to get a little bit lighter something like that and again so right now I am alternating between ultramarine blue phthalo green white and my background color. So I just picked up a little bit of my background color to get this one to blend in a little bit more. And again, I know that they're gonna dry a little bit darker. You can see that on these ones that have already dried a little bit. And you can get have this as dramatic as you want or as subtle as you want. It's gonna be your, your visual preference. Know that you are gonna have um, a big snowflake taking over the show in a little bit. So don't be, um, uh, you know, don't think that this is going to take up the whole visual um, space or attention. So if you do something that is not exactly as you had planned, know that these aren't going to be the star of the show. Your big, huge snowflake <laughs> is going to be the star of the show. So if this doesn't, again, go as you had planned, don't worry. And again, I'm just picking up a tiny bit of white right now, getting this to go a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter little bit lighter and of course now that's going to be too light for me so I'm picking up some of my background color which is where the background color is kind of like your safe color you get to use that to um, counteract anything that happens that you didn't expect and then what I'm going to do is I will let this dry fiddle with it a little bit more if there's anything that I want to do like I want this one to be a little bit brighter I do want them to be visible so if they're drying too dark I might add a little bit more to them here and there maybe a little bit more blue maybe a little bit more of my um, phthalo green I can overlap the colors if I want I just put my ultramarine blue on top of that one I'm go I'm not going to do much down here because I know that I'm going to have my um, my snow piled up down here as well as my big snowflakes so I don't really need to do much down here and then I would definitely clean up any edges that might like I've got a couple of unfinished edges here I'll just pick up some of my background color make sure that I've got a good um, coverage on all of my edges and things of that nature and then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so once you've got all of your out of focus color pattern on here again just let it dry see if there's um, any little fiddles or tweaks that you want to do with it and then you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting the first layer for our snow and our snowflakes which i guess is the same thing <laughs> snow and snowflakes snowflakes are just close up on snow so First layer to the snow. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a gray color that I'll be using as the base coat. So that way I can build my way to the bright white sparkly stuff in the end so it has some great dimension to it. So I have pre-mixed myself my gray color. I'm gonna show you how I got to that by using my small brush to, to mix my paint. What I did was I am using mostly white. This is the gray that I'm going for. And then I used some brown and black to get to my desired gray shade. I, a lot of times, oops, I just put a little green on my brush. A lot of times I like to use um, brown in my gray mixtures because it brings a little bit of, um, for me, like a more of an earthy, tone to my grays. If I want the gray to look really cold, I might not use brown, but in this case, I wanted to use it in this, uh, the making of this snow in order to give some almost like a luminescent value to the color of the snow. So that's why I'm choosing to put a little bit of brown in it. So that's where I'm headed. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to first make myself kind of a pile of snow down at the bottom that my big huge snowflake is going to be sitting in. So I'm picking up some of my 
custom gray. I'm going to come up on the left hand side almost halfway up my canvas. So if this is about halfway, I'm about maybe inch and a half to two inches below that. I'm going to make myself a little bit of a marker. And then I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom right hand corner, maybe come up, I would say maybe about an inch or two. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these two with a really uneven type of um, line, so to speak, to give myself the, the pile of snow. I'm going to be using a dotting or a stippling type of technique, so this is just going to give me this nice soft edges to it. I don't need to col color in the whole thing 100%, so this is going to give me um, like these soft edges and some good dimension within my my pile of snow and I'm just kind of bringing it up in a couple of different areas somewhere in through here is gonna work out just fine for me I haven't even reloaded my brush I'm just allowing for some nice soft edges we'll be adding some additional colors to this in a little bit but this is just going to give us a nice great way to start the um, to start the snow making process and then what I'm going to do. I'm going to be using the same color to start my snowflakes. Although my snowflakes are going to have a lot of detail with, with that we'll use our small brush for, I want to first put a nice um, kind of layer on them to give them a lot of texture within that flake itself. So I'm going to use my large brush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to squish it in my gray paint. So what this is doing is it's putting paint in my bristles and it is pulling my bristles together. So I have a nice kind of textured edge that I can make these lines with. So I'm going to have the center of my, um, of my big huge snowflake somewhere around here. So if this is about the center of my canvas, I'm down maybe three or four inches and to the left maybe about an inch. So I'm just going to make myself a little bit of a dot and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using this long edge to give myself the kind of, we'll call it the spokes of my, of my, um, my snowflake. So if this is the center, I just want to kind of keep my eyeball on that area, so I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of come up. I'm hardly touching my canvas. I'm just kind of dotting it. I'm going to take mine somewhere up in this vicinity, and they don't have to be super straight lines. This is just going to give me my my um, structure for it. I'm going to take this in this same direction, diagonal direction into here. This is going to be where it sticks into my my um, pile of snow. I'm going to do another one coming almost straight up, something like this. And again, I'm just kind of using the edge of my of my brush and then just bringing this down in this direction. So these are can be very symmetrical. They can be um, whatever you envision them to be. I'm going to make mine pretty darn symmetrical from one side to the other, but because I am freehanding it and not using a ruler or a pencil, the, it most likely will get not perfect, but I'm okay with that. Um, and, but if you're not okay with that, you can certainly, you know, pull out a a pencil or a ruler to get it perfect. Once I've got that in there, I'm just going to do I'm going to do a couple of um, kind of geometrical type of decorations or um, markings along the side, so it almost looks like there's a center area. So I just did a diagonal line there, and then I'll come about the same distance on this side and do the same thing. And again, it might not be exactly perfect. I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Um, as to where I want these. Yours can certainly be a little bit different than mine. I can see mine is definitely not perfect, which I'm okay with that. And then I'm going to do one more kind of interior um, decoration like this. And if this brush begins to be too big for you, you can certainly switch brushes if you want to. I'm also going to put with this big brush, I'm going to be doing a cup, the start of a couple of the decorations on the side. So I'm going to come about halfway up this one and I'm going to do one, two, three like that and do the same thing on this side. One, two, 
three, whatever I do on one spoke, I've got to do on the other one, but this spoke is going to be, I, I'm sure that's not the right word. <laughs> it is in my head because it looks like some kind of wheel um, in here. So I wouldn't need to do it there, but I think I want to do this decoration on this one here. So I'll come up about halfway, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, which means I would do it on this one too. But this one I think is, I you know wouldn't see much of it. So maybe one, two, and then one, two. So that's looking pretty, oh, maybe we'll do one more on these ones in through here. So this one I'm gonna go, maybe I'll come up here a little bit. And these decorations, you could really have fun and make yours whatever you want them to be. Uh, this snowflake is from my imagination. So whatever um, you imagine your decorations to be is up to you. You can use the thought or the um, some of the ideas that I'm using in mine, but you can modify them to your own painting. They don't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be like mine. Yours, yours can be your own painting. This one, I guess, would hide in through there. So that's all I'm going to do with the roughing in on this one, I think. No, maybe, maybe one more. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to stop. We're going to do one more here, one more here. And again, I, I'm digging these um, kind of soft underlying notes that this brush is going to give me. That's why I'm doing it. So then I'm going to do another partial one up and through here. This will kind of be my center right here, which is a little bit to the right of the center of my canvas. I'm going to just kind of dot this down to about here. Uh, I'm going to have maybe the center of my snowflake right in through here. So we'll do maybe a little line here, a little line there. We'll go this direction and this direction, and then I'll come out in this direction and this direction. So that'll work for that one. And then I'm just going to have another little one over on this side. This one's just going to go off of my canvas so you wouldn't see. Maybe the center is somewhere over in through here. And that's all I'm going to do for that part. I'm going to put a couple of soft for the for the full snowflakes, I'm going to put a couple of soft, um, almost uh, out of focus snowflakes throughout the whole thing. I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel because I know I had a good amount in those bristles. And then I'm just going to kind of dot in. Maybe this is a, a little, I don't know, fluffy piece of snow. Maybe we've got another little fluffy piece of snow in through here. Maybe we've got a couple of little dots of snow somewhere in through here. So have fun with making those. Um, kind of carefree ones. Maybe there's another little one in through here. And then we're going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this large brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the base coat for the designs on the snowflakes. <laughs> I'm going to use my small brush. The color I'm going to use is that same gray that we used in the previous step. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to make a whole bunch of symmetrical design elements for my snowflakes. These can be whatever you imagine them to be. When you look at those um, like hyper close-up photographs of snowflakes, they usually have symmetrical type of icicle type design work on them. So that's what I'm going to be doing and you can certainly use these types of um, mark making that I'm going to be doing and incorporate them in whatever way you want. So I've got my small brush, I've got my gray paint that I'm going to be using and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and emulate from one side to the other a specific design. So on these two guys right in through here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a whole bunch of what's going to look like little hearts. So I'll go up one side, so that's four that's five. <laughs> and, and I do a whole lot of counting during this step too. <laughs> so then I'll go ahead and I'll do the same on the other side of that particular element. If I want to pull out the little tip of it, I can do that. And then I go ahead and I'll do the same on the same um, object that's on the opposing side of the snowflake. Four, five, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. And now that I know that I did that design on that one, I would do it on the opposite side one as well. So that would be this one down and through here. But I know I've only, I can only see a piece of this on one, two, three, four, 
maybe I can see that one. One, two, three, four, five. I can't see this side here, so I don't need to do that. And then if I have this uh, decorative element mimicked somewhere else, which I do on these two spokes or arms, so I'll just go do that same design work on those ones. And if you're finding that um, your your brush is hold on one two three four five you might want to use a smaller brush than I'm using um, you might want to use a little liquid medium on your brush whatever is going to work for you to get those um, little designs in the way that you want you can see as I'm going through my process I'm not super concerned about it being perfect. I'm just trying to give the illusion that one side is pretty representational and similar to the other side, but as far as the um, the size ratio goes, I can see like I, I'm not symmetrical on my central center thing, so I'm okay if I have, you know, asymmetry else, elsewhere, but um, Again, whatever feeds your painterly eye and makes you okay with it is where you, you take it. These are not exactly the same size as the ones over there, but that's, that's fine by me. Then um, I think on this one, I'm also going to do um, some little, little spiky things here. One, two, three, put a top on one, two, three, one, two, three, put a top on one, two, three. And now that I did that on that one, I go and do it on the other ones. So it's really just a repetition of mark making on, for me, on this one. You, you again, could have, maybe you want all sides of your snowflake to be different from one another. And if that's the case, then, then work it that way. You can have it in various ways. You can even just have lots of little sparkles on your snowflake. You don't have to make it um, as clear and specifically des um, detail oriented as I'm making, but if you want to, feel free to do so. I'm going to do a couple of bigger heart type of shapes up in through here, maybe one here, one here. So, and for me, it's easier to do one element and, and mimic it. Otherwise, I, I'll get confused <laughs> and I will forget which one I did. So, I just try and keep myself on track and um, doing it systematically. I can't see the tips of these ones. Maybe I'll also do, um, I think I want to do, I think that's good for there. Maybe, maybe a little circle of sorts at the end of this, just to give myself a little end piece. And then I'm going to go ahead and do these guys over in through here. So, um, actually I think I want a couple more in through here. I think I want a nice skinny one there, a skinny one there. And then, so that gives me a skinny one here and here. And I'm really just, this is just helping me to fill in, fill in some of these spaces. I, I, when I was looking at different designs for snowflakes, I think one of the, the biggest um, common denominators that I was seeing, because there are no two snowflakes alike, <laughs> just for the record, um, the biggest thing that I was finding that was similar from one snowflake to the next was the amount of detail that was in all of the icicle type of um, markings or decorations on it. So it was, you know, they just were really filled in with lots of information. This one's upside down, so I want to um, make sure that I get it the way that I want. So I did one bump, one bump like that, and then another bump like this. Um, let's see, on these guys, I think I want to kind of mimic that as well. So like this, one, 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 one. And again, I'm just kind of going from one side to the next, trying to give a, a symmetrical type of design element. You could do swirls, you could do polka dots, where, you know, whatever works for you. So that's pretty good for these four main ones. And then I'm going to 
do a couple of designs on these other ones. So I'm gonna go maybe across like that. I'm gonna give myself these little, well, that one was a little tall, so we'll just make it taller. <laughs> and again, whatever I do on one side, I'll do on another side. So that looks good there. We'll mimic that one over here. And we've got uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. There we go, that works. And then we'll do one of those here. And again, so I'm just kind of filling in my spaces. One, two, three, with a whole bunch of fun decorations. So again, you could do polka dots, you could do swirls, you could do circles. I'm doing lots of heart shapes. You could do diamonds, you could do rectangles. We'll be doing some sparkly um, marks later on, so that takes care of that. I'm gonna do um, a couple more of these little heart things. One, two, three. One, two, three. And when we go to do the, um, the colored portion later, which, which is gonna have a lot of reflections in it from those colors that we put in earlier, that's when um, this will really come to life. But this type of work that I'm doing right now, for me, I, one of my biggest pleasures in painting is line work, so, when I get into a step like this, granted when I'm, when I'm talking to you viewers on, on, on camera, it's a little bit different, but when I'm doing it in my studio, all by myself, listening to my music, it's like this is the type of work that I just kind of zone in on and really lose myself because it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, so it might end up being one of your favorite things to do. You might really not like doing line work, but when you when you get into it, it's like you just let your brush go and you get to kind of, you know, just feel the fun of mimicking certain patterns. Um, I like the patterns. I like the line work. This is kind of like a, a fun rendition of like that, that Mandela kind of pattern work that people do a lot. Actually, I'm thinking that that's pretty good. I might do, I think I'm going to do um, some kind of additional piece in here like this. Um, so it, this might be a really great and fun thing for, for you to do on your end. And, you know, maybe it's something that you end up really liking. I think I'm going to pull this little sparkle area out a little bit in through there just so it looks a little bit thicker. There we go. And now I'm going to go do a couple of little ones up on my top my top areas. So for me on this one up in through here, I'm going to do a fun kind of diamond or a star type of um, type of work. So I'm going to take, if this is like my center area in through here, I'm going to just kind of take um, and connect some of the, like every um, fourth spoke. So one, two, three, four. So if I take this and just kind of connect it like this, do it at the same height on either side. This is going to create this really fun, like star type of effect on this one. Um, just kind of getting my head straight here. Going to bring this over in through here. Going to bring one, two, three, four. So this one would um, come somewhere over in through here. And this again is just a design that, uh, as I was painting, I'm like, oh, that would be really a fun thing for me personally because I like you know, just to kind of see certain designs and and just kind of connect them. One, two, three. That one might, might have been a little off, but that's okay. We've got a point, a point. Oh, this one needs to go in through here. Something like that. And we've got one coming out of each side of the line in through there. That looks good enough for me. <laughs> and then I'll do a couple of extra ones on the tips. Maybe we'll put a little line at the end of each one of these in through here. And then maybe I'll do a couple of those little heart things at the end. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then I think I'll do the hearts on this one too. One, two, three. And these ones are smaller because this snowflake is a little, little farther off in the distance, one, two, three. And if you find that one of your spokes is not as long as you want, you can just pull it out if you want to. Up Again, up to you. Maybe we've got a couple of little, just little spikes off the end of that one, like that. That's looking good. And then this one, I'm just gonna maybe put a couple of little spikes, two, three, four, 
We're going to put some on this one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then maybe this one gets a couple of little circles on that one. And then I think that's all I'm going to do for my little design work. We're going to be using this uh, same, no, actually we're going to use our large brush for the next step. So you can put your small brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our fluffy snow. So that's going to be the snow down in through here and then these little fluffy pieces that are just adorning the rest of the canvas. I'm going to be using my large brush. The dominant color I'm going to be using is white, but I'm also going to be using a little bit of blue, my um, ultramarine blue, a little bit of um, my custom background color, that bluish green that we use. And if I need to, I'll go back into that gray. That'll just be kind of like my safe color if I need to. So what I'm looking to do is just add some nice texture onto my snow, make it nice and bright and white and fluffy and glistening up at the top, um, and adding a little bit of the coolness to it, which would be coming from the blue and that bluish green that we created. So I'm gonna start with just a little bit of white paint on my brush. See, I don't have very much at all. And this is going to start my process. I'm really just kind of using my dotting or stippling type of technique to uh, get the the idea of where I want my brightest of my bright snow to go. I don't have much paint on my brush because I don't want it to all be super duper white and I don't want to make it all one solid color. So I'm really just using a tiny bit on my brush to get it to get it started. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of my background uh, green and white as well. So just a itty bitty bit on my brush plus white and this is going to give me a little bit of coolness to my snow. And I'm going to again not overdo it, just do little bits and pieces here and there just to give me that illusion of some, some um, different colors in it. Now I'm picking up a tiny bit of my blue without washing my brush. I'm going to put this down towards the bottom so it really brings out the um, the depth of the coolness to it. Now I think I am going to pick up a little bit of my gray just so it intermingles with my blue. So I'm picking up some of my custom gray just to kind of get this in through here and then I'm going to go back into a tiny bit of my white in order to um, just get maybe a little extra layer of fluffiness in through here. And again, it, no, I'm not overdoing it. I'm allowing myself to have these little sparkles of bright white snow, maybe a little layer of snow here and there, just so it looks like we've got some good dimension. If you need, I just picked up a little bit more of my gray. Just keep alternating those colors until you have that fluffiness, picked up a little bit more white on those edges down towards the base. I just have it a little bit darker at the bottom and brighter at the top. That's gonna allow for that textural element of the, of the snow to be visible. And then once I've got this bottom area done, I'm gonna move into these little guys up here. I'm not even gonna wash my brush, I'm just gonna see what I have for remnants on my brush and just kind of give them that extra little bit of um, texture. With I'm not doing anything other than taking what the remnants on my brush are. If I feel I want it a little bit brighter, I can pick up a tiny bit of white, but again, hardly doing anything at all. And then I would just fiddle with it. If I wanted anything darker, I could certainly pick up some more of my blue or my gray. I just picked up a little bit more blue or gray just to get these little dark pockets, but I don't really, again, need to do much. Just something giving myself that pretty snow that's, you know, resting on whatever the surface is. And then we're gonna use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, fiddle with it as much as you want. And then you can put this large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our snowflakes. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are white, blue, and my custom bluish green. You could use certainly use the thallo green as opposed to the bluish green that we created. What 
wherever your comfort zone is. Again, this is where you should be. What I'm going to be doing is I'm putting a whole bunch of reflections in my snowflakes and highlights on the um, sparkly edges of the icicle-y stuff in them. I'm going to be using um, my small brush. I'm going to be creating little reflections in what I would perceive to be the little ice parts, almost like a piece of glass within maybe these little um, shape, circular oval type of shapes that I created maybe in the center area. And then I'm going to be adding lots of little bright twinkly highlights with white to finish it up. So I'm going to start with blue and a tiny bit of white on my brush. And I'm going to be creating this um, little reflection in some of my we'll call it p the panes, uh, like p the panes of a window in um, these areas within my snowflake. So I'm just kind of rubbing it in. I'm not doing a real solid color. I want it to look as if it's, you know, just reflecting some of the colors that are within the atmosphere. You can bring it right to part of, you know, that gray, outline that we had done. You can put this color in as many places as you'd like. So I'm using blue plus white. I'm going to put this in maybe some of these guys over here. Maybe I put it over and through here. You can use any intensity of the blue and white. You can um, you can make it vary. I wouldn't go all the way white, but I'm definitely using both colors on my brush. Maybe I've got a little reflection on top of the shiny snow. You can be inside these little these little pockets. I, I'm not going to be doing it consistently the same. Um, like if I do it on these three over here, that doesn't mean that I have to do it on the subsequent three. That when I'm doing these reflections, they could certainly be uh, um, not symmetrical with from one side to the other. I'm really just kind of popping them in wherever I wherever I want to. <laughs> and I don't want to do it over the whole thing. I just want it to look like it's you know, some of this these snowflakes are just grabbing the 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 colors from the atmosphere and it's just making it look so pretty and sparkly. Maybe we've got a little bit of the blue one uh, or the blue color in this pane in through here. Maybe it kind of goes a little bit in through this one. And I'll put some green on in a minute, but what I'm doing right now is I'm just carrying the blue in as many places as I want. I'm gonna do the same thing with this blue on these other snowflakes. So I'm just kind of pulling uh, this color into little bits and pieces of this one. And again, I'm not doing the whole thing. Maybe this interior part's got some of that blue color. We're, we'll be putting um, some bright white in a minute to give some extra sparkle, but this is just, again, giving me some kind of life and twinkle in my snowflake. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, do that same process with my custom background green, the bluish green and white. So again, I just wiped my brush off. I picked up some of my background color plus a tiny bit of white and I'm gonna do the same thing So I'm with this color. So because I've got white on my brush also, it's gonna make this color look even brighter. And you can, I'm gonna show you it with the phthalo green too. I didn't say that I was gonna do that, but I am doing it. <laughs> Just so you can see how vibrant using that color would also look. So you could certainly incorporate the phthalo green too. It's gonna to be brighter, more vibrant, and have a little bit more um, intensity to the color if you use the phthalo green as opposed to the um, the custom green that we created, but that again is going to be up to you. You could you could do this with purples, you could do it with pinks, you could do it with whatever kind of color you want. I want this to be nice and kind of um, uh, in these bigger sections. I'm doing it kind of like a little bit of a gradient of sorts, so I'm just kind of rubbing it in so it looks like it's almost. Um, reflecting <laughs> off of the the piece of glass or the shiny surface you can overlap your colors I, and again if something goes wrong just let it dry and come back on top of it with your background color and that will that will help to um 
counteract it. So again, just picking up those colors to give myself some um, some of it in in some of these little panes of the glass. I am kind of digging the the fallow green right now, so I think I'm going to use a little bit more of that than I had anticipated because it's it's looking very nice and. Um, exciting to me so they, and those are the decisions that I make as I go along if I had planned on doing one thing and then as I'm going through the process if something else starts to excite me more if I did something um, that I wasn't expecting and that excites me more then that's the direction I go in I don't need to always go a hundred percent with my initial plan if something doesn't you know, if I accidentally do something that I like more, I will definitely hop on that bus and stay there because, you know, it's it's just one of those things that happens a great deal in painting because your brush stroke is unpredictable. The, quanti the quantity of paint that you have on your brush can be unpredictable and you oftentimes will do something unexpected. And when that happens, you, if you like it, don't don't be afraid to utilize it and to and to roll with it. You know that's that's the beauty of this. That we you know I often find that I discover things that I didn't know I was going to like by accident because it just you know it presented itself to me in unexpected times and and that's you know. Uh, when you don't plan for something, <laughs> you tend to, you know, it gets surprised and sometimes it's a good thing. So that's looking pretty good to me. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put some, some white sparkly stuff on. So I wash and dry my brush. I'm going into my white paint. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting long twinkles and sparkles and streaks so I can, in essence, kind of take my white paint and I can, I can add these little... Bits, I'm, right now I'm just dotting. I can add these little bits of sparkles all over my snowflakes. I can do dots like I'm doing now for sparkles in the texture of the snow. I don't want to necessarily do it as much as I had the gray on there because then it will take away from the dimensional element of it. So I, I am strategically just kind of popping a little bit in and not going overboard with it. I can do these long streaks that'll make it look like it's um, sparkling and it's taking on almost like a sunbeam kind of appearance. You can do a ton of this. You can do a little bit of it wherever you want to do it is is up to you. The more kind of white sparkly stuff that you have on there, the more it's going to look like it's sparkling. However, if you overdo it, you're if and you and you put sparkles on a hundred percent of the gray area, then you then it loses that white loses its intensity. So as you're doing this, know that you know sparkles are pretty, sparkles are great. They're going to add a lot of um, of excitement to it but if you do it too much it will it will take away from the impact of it it will make it so because you're taking away some of the contrast so when I'm doing like little pieces up and through here I'm just hitting the the corner of that um, piece of um, uh, Snowflake. I'm not. I'm not doing the whole thing. I'm trying to stay out of wet paint. I don't want to get my hand to go through wet paint. But even like this center line that I'm doing, I don't have to do the whole thing. I can skip around it. I can take my little white and do little, just a couple little sparkles in through here. Maybe just a couple of dots on these guys in through here. But again, I'm I'm doing it so I still can see some of that gray underneath, which allows that white to have to to carry its own intensity if i did this 100% it wouldn't it wouldn't shine as bright you have to have darkness next to the light in order to see the light so this having that gray next to it helps to make these these white marks that i'm making even sparklier and then i just kind of put it wherever i want there's a lot of dot making oops i just We've got an extra one over there. <laughs> There's a lot of extra, you know, just mark making that I'm doing right now. And that, again, will um, just feed my sparkly 
um, snowflake story. And then I'm going to just kind of go down this little line in through here. And I, because I'm kind of going on the quicker side and just allowing my brush to find some, some nice spots to put a little extra bit of white paint because I'm not doing it um, systematically and I'm just kind of doing it where I feel that maybe a little sparkle would happen, that's what's going to make it look the most natural. It's going to allow it to look like Mother Nature created these marks and not, you know, a machine brain or hand, you know, creating um, a systematic approach to it. I definitely want a little bit more sparkles in through here and maybe in through here. And you can use this to help kind of um, make things a little bit more symmetrical if you needed to adjust the way one side looked from the other. And I'm thinking that that's pretty good. Those have some good ones. I'm going to hit the ones up top. And then we just have a couple of little sparkles left to go. Um, that will add to the exterior kind of shine of our snow. And you could also, as you're doing this, you could also add a bit of moisture to your brush, especially if you're doing these longer sparkles or the longer kind of um, trails of the marks. If you have a tiny bit of water or liquid medium on your brush or even a smaller brush, it would help you to get, um, you know, longer, more narrow lines. But again, I'm just going for sparkles. I'm not going for anything that needs to be um, perfectly executed here. I, maybe you pull out the line a little bit farther than your original um, snowflake marking, and that's going to make it look like it's shining a little bit brighter than, um, that was a little, a little too much, it's shining a little bit brighter than the actual size of the snowflake. So that's a cute effect, just bringing that little tiny mark out a little bit further, that bright white spot. I'm going to do the same thing on here because I liked that. So just bring that little bright uh, tip out like that. That looks good. And then I'm going to just put a couple of little sparkles throughout the throughout the canvas. So if I wanted one to just kind of look like we've got a shiny piece of snow in through here, I just make a nice bright white dot and then I can just kind of pull out maybe four to six of these little sparkly um, marks in through there. Maybe I've got one in my snow. So I do something like this and then just kind of pull out these bright white um, little sparkle marks. And that's going to just make it look like your snow is shining as well. Maybe I've got a big one. I'm finding a dark spot in my snow and then just kind of pulling out uh, a big white sparkly area. And of course you could do it in your, in your snowflake as well. You can kind of put a little sparkle on the tip of one of your snowflakes like that. That'll make it shine bright. So have fun with, with you know, even a simple little process like this, making that, that um, object just shine. And then I would let it dry. I would fiddle with it as much as I wanted to to get my painterly eye to be happy. And then we're going to be doing, uh, using the same small brush for the next step so you can wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going to be using my small brush. I think I'm going bottom right on this one with white paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could, of course, sign yours with your first name or the date. You could use a date. You could use your initials. You could use a symbol. Whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is up to you because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you've painted yourself a fun, wintry image, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.